Did you know that 90% of people who manage to keep their weight off share one surprising habit that's not just about burning calories? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And in part three of our ultimate weight loss guide, I'm going to reveal how exercise rewires your metabolism, protects muscle, and stops weight regain. And this is backed by 66 different trials. So let's get started and turbocharge your fat loss. Now, in part one, we learned that your body fights weight loss with a slower metabolism, hunger spikes, and genetic set points. In part two, we learned that there's no best diet. Success depends on matching one to your particular lifestyle. And now exercise is the third part. Exercise is a game changer. It doesn't just burn calories. It rebuilds your metabolism and makes weight loss last. As a physician, I've seen diet-only patients stall while those adding exercise transform their health. And today, we'll use science to design your perfect exercise plan. So we're going to explore five exercise concepts, cardio versus weights, why both matter, HIT versus zone two, which burns fat fast, NEAT, your hidden calorie weapon, fasted versus fed exercise and what's the truth, muscle preservation, which is your key to lasting results. So let's start with the big debate, cardio or weights, should you run or should you lift? There's a meta-analysis of 66 trials that basically says both are essentials. Cardio cuts about 1.2 kilograms more fat than weights over 10 weeks, but weights preserve 0.8 to 0.9 kilograms more muscle. So why does this matter? Well, losing muscle during weight loss, up to 30% of total loss, it can tank your metabolism by 60 to 100 calories per day. And so if you combine the training, cardio and weights, you're going to maximize fat loss and you're going to get muscle retention. So the metabolic wins that we're talking about is when you do cardiovascular exercise, you're going to help to get rid of some of that visceral fat, especially the one that's inside the organs, but coupled with subcutaneous fats ends up showing around the belly. And then weights are going to boost your glucose uptake. They're going to cut hemoglobin A1C by 0.97% in diabetics versus 0.51% with cardio alone. So in plain English, muscles are calorie burning engines. Lose them and your metabolism slows forever. So cardio burns fat, but weight keeps your engine strong. So it's not about or, it's about and, and weights. And so for everyone out there, I'm sure you guys have heard different things, but which team are you? Cardio, weights, or both in terms of what you do now? Pop it in the comments. And if you're just starting out how to do it, remember for cardio, you really want to aim for 150 to 300 minutes per week if it's moderate or 75 to 150 minutes if it's vigorous per week. So moderate is like a brisk walk. Vigorous would be like running. And for weight training, try to do two to four sessions per week. And if you're thinking about, you know, exactly what to do, aim for two to four sets, eight to 12 reps. And you're really trying to do it to a point where it's about 60 to 80% of effort. And the schedule wise, look, one day of cardio, one day of weights, this way you can get both of them in. And as you get used to it, try to go a little bit higher on the weights, progress over perfection. Now, the next topic is what type of cardio burns fat the best? Is it hit? Is it zone two? What's the truth? So there's a review of 13 studies and they showed that they all cut 4 to 6% fat over 8 to 12 weeks if calories burned are equal. So how they work. Zone 2 is 60 to 70% max heart rate. That's like a conversational pace. And that burns 50 to 60% fat during the exercise. HIT is about 90 to 95% effort burst. And it creates what we call an afterburn or epoch. And that boosts metabolism post-workout. And then there's, of course, steady state, which is really around 70 to 85% of your max heart rate. It balances fat and carbs, and there's a moderate afterburn. So what's the differences? Well, with HIT, you're talking shorter times, so 20 to 25 sessions. You're talking faster fitness gains, 10 to 15% better fitness gains. Zone 2 is easier recovery, but of course it takes longer. So there's a higher weekly volume. 
And the one thing to note is with HIT, people get excited, but HIT is tougher and it does tend to have higher dropout rates. So plain English, zone two is steady fat burning logs. HIT is a metabolism explosion that keeps burning. And steady state is really trying to split the difference. So if you're just starting out and you want to know, hey, how do I get started? Well, HIT, if you want to do it, it's two to three sessions a week. Remember, you need longer recovery time. They're shorter. So about 20 to 25 minutes of HIT is a lot. Remember, you can do about 30 to 60 second sprints, one to two minutes of recovery. On the other hand, zone two would be about three to five sessions per week. They're about 30 to 60 minutes and you're aiming for 60 to 70% of your max heart rate. And if you want to do the combination or hybrid, the best of both worlds, that's what I like to do. It's about one to two episodes of HIT and about two to three episodes of Zone 2 weekly. And so if you're doing it that way, it keeps the workouts fun, interesting, and exciting. Now, let's get into NEAT. NEAT is that hidden calorie burner we don't talk enough about. Remember, it stands for non exercise activity thermogenesis. And it's just your daily movement. It's walking, it's fidgeting, it's standing. And what's interesting is it can vary by as much as 1,000 calories per day between active and sedentary people. There's an overfeeding uh, study, and what it showed was that high meat folks, they just move more un unconsciously, and that helps them to resist weight gain. So why does it matter? Dieting cuts NEAT by about 350 calories per day and slows down your metabolism. So it's interesting to note that the evidence shows if you just stand, standing burns 50 to 100 calories per hour more than sitting. That's why if you get the opportunity, stand at your desk, don't sit. Walking 8,000 to 10,000 steps a day adds 200 and 400 extra calories burned. So wherever you go, Park your car furthest away when you leave the house. And then fidgeting doesn't do much, but it can burn about 50 to 150 calories per day. But remember, all these little things, standing, fidgeting, walking more, they all add up to create that deficit. So what's the simple way to understand this? Dieting makes you move less without noticing. And your body goes into a power-saving mode, so to speak. Neat overrides that with small daily habits. And so here's a question for you. How many steps do you hit per day? And is there an opportunity you could do better? So do you have any neat hacks that you do? Put them in the comments. And if you're just starting out, remember, starts easy. You could stand for 30 to 60 minutes per hour. So imagine if you're sitting there at a desk, maybe spend half an hour out of your hour standing at the desk. Aim for 8,000 to 10,000 steps a day. Pace during calls. Take the stairs when the opportunity arises. Park further away. Do tracking with a pedometer on your smartphone. Now for one of the questions that always gets asked is, should you exercise on an empty stomach? So fasting versus feds exercise. This is a huge myth, so let's bust the myth. So fasted cardio, it burns about 3.1 grams more fat during the exercise due to low insulin. But 24-hour fat loss is ideal identical to fed exercise. In other words, your body balances the fuel it uses. So why it evens down? You can burn fat now, carbs later, that's the fasted state. Or you can burn carbs now and fat later, that's the fed state. And there are individual factors. Fasted, you may get some nausea or fatigue. Fed, you may boost high intensity performance. So, you know, I have two daughters that I always talk about, they do wrestling and jujitsu. So for them, they can't go into training fasted. It's just going to not be a good performance. So they go into a training fed and it's very methodical on how we do it. But to understand this concept in very simple English, remember your body is a hybrid car. It's gas and it's electric or fat or carbs. And it uses the same fuel by the day's end. So in other words, it will end up using both of them gas, and electric. Timing doesn't really trick it. So if you found one or the other workouts effectively, how do you feel in terms of doing those workouts? Are you getting the goals that you achieve either with fasted or fed? Comment below. And 
if you're starting out and you want to know how to do it, if you're going to do fasted workouts, then try to aim for that low intensity zone two training. Make sure you're hydrated. And if you're going to do the fed ones, that's where think about the idea that with fed, you could do higher intensity hit workouts if you wanted to. But if you're thinking about what might make sense, well, you want to get about 15 to 30 grams of carbs. You want to get about 5 to 10 grams of protein. And you want to do this about one to two hours before your workout. So if you're somebody who's asking, well, what's a very simple thing I could do? A banana and a yogurt, for example. That in itself would take care of it. And of course, you can make whatever changes you want to help you out. And then finally, the key to keeping weight off. So weight loss is going to end up stripping you of about 20 to 30% muscle, and it's going to cut your metabolism by 6 to 10 calories per pound that's lost. Resistance training is going to end up giving you about 1.2 to 1.6 gram per kilogram of protein If you get that much protein in, and remember that's ideal body weight, you're going to preserve about 0.8 to 0.9 kilograms of muscle. So the National Weight Control Registry shows 90% of maintainers, weight maintainers, they end up getting about 200 to 300 minutes per week of exercise. That's the magic number to keep the weight off. And why it works? Well, it preserves your metabolism. It regulates your hunger and it boosts insulin sensitivity. And if you have older adults, anybody who's over the age of 40, so I know that I use the word older and I'm 50, so terrible term to use, but here's the thing. Combining training with strength and cardio, what you're going to find is that overall your strength will go up, your posture, your endurance, your VO2 max, and you're going to lose some of that stubborn fat that you've been struggling to lose. So keep in mind, muscle is your metabolic foundation. Lose it and your weight loss house collapses. Weights and protein will help you to keep it solid. And how should you do it? Weights, once again, two to four times per week. Focus on compounds exercises, right? Compound exercises are things like squats, presses, All of those are great for protein, 20 to 30 grams per meal, three to four times a day. Track your strength grains, not just how much weight you're losing. And if you can, aim for that magic number of 200 to 300 minutes per week of total activity. So what are some practical applications of this video today? Let's talk very basics. Your exercise blueprint, the minimum dose, is two weight sessions per week, under 50 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous cardio, 8,000 steps per day, 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram of protein based on ideal body weight per day. The optimized plan is more like three to four weight sessions per week, one to two hit sessions, two to three zone two sessions, 10,000 steps per day, and meal timing based on your activities. In other words, being in a fed state before high intensity activities. And a sustainable integration is really schedule your workouts like meetings, make them habits, and then stack the habits together. For example, I listen to my books on tape when I go for my walks. Track your strength, not just the scale, and aim to progress about 10% weekly. And don't forget, rest is important. And on your rest days, you could do things like stretching, yoga, etc. But the most important part of this is consistency matters more than intensity. Enjoy the movement you love. Recovery is just as important because recovery builds results. You tear down muscles during your workout. You need the recovery to repair them. So bottom line here is exercise isn't just calorie burning. It's metabolic transformation and combining training cuts fat, saves muscle. And keep in mind, all cardio works. And with meat, you add huge wins to it. And as far as fasting or fed goes, well, either state is fine. Just remember, it's the deficits that you're trying to create. And at the end of 24 hours, whether you did fasted workout or you did a fed workout, It all ends up being the same. The bottom line with all of this is muscle preservation is the key. That is what's going to help you to prevent your weight regain. And the 90% of people who maintain weight loss, they move about 200 to 300 minutes per week. 
but it's not willpower. It's strategy. It's habits. So hopefully you found this helpful. Start your exercise plan today. And if you found any information here helpful to your future, your health, your friends' health, your family's health, listen, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button, the subscribe button. Don't forget we have part four, which focuses on sleep, stress, and habits that are going to help to bring all of this together. So I want to thank you so much for joining me. Remember, you always want to practice kindness and gratitude. So express gratitude, express kindness to others, and also express kindness to yourself by taking care of your health. Thank you so much, and I'll see everybody next time.